Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I'm gonna show you how I save my zinnia flower seeds to use again for next year. So we're getting to the time of the year where the flowers are starting to um, dry up outside. Um, you know, they're not producing a whole lot more flowers, and this is like the perfect time of year to save the seeds from your plants, from your flowers and other plants. I saved, last year was my first year trying to save seeds and I saved seeds from several different types of flowers and vegetables and for flowers that included zinnias, coxcomb, which I hope to do a video on as well soon, um, marigolds, and spider flower or um, uh, cleome flowers. And I think, yeah, I had success growing seeds uh, and plants from all of them using the winter sowing process, which I have a series on, talks about that process for growing your seedlings basically outdoors uh, throughout the winter in uh, milk jugs instead of indoors under grow lights. And check out that series if you wanna know more about that super easy process for growing seedlings from seed. So there's several reasons you may want to consider saving seeds. Um, one is the obvious supply chain thing. During the beginning of the pandemic, there was a shortage of seeds people had problem getting them and you really can save money as well as stress by being able to save some of your own seeds knowing that you can have that same uh, fruit or flower the following year another reason to save them is that i think with plants when you're seeing the whole process there's a real education and being in touch with the earth that you can get by starting the seed from from starting the plant from seed, seeing it all the way through to the end of its life cycle, cycle, collecting the seeds and growing it again the next year. There's something so fulfilling about being able to do that and so empowering, I think. And so having a close understanding of kind of how that works can be very helpful for you for understanding the plant in the future as well. And the third reason for saving seeds is that for every generation that you save the seeds from that plant that performs best in your area, the next generation of plants are actually gonna pre perform better. They're more acclimated. These are the seeds of the plants that have performed well in your zone, in your neighborhood, in your microclimate. And so the more you can keep those going, the hardier and healthier and better productive your plants are likely to be, assuming all other conditions go well. Now there's a there's a few things that apply to whenever you save seeds in any way from vegetables, flowers, um, everything I've experienced so far. And one of those is to know the difference between open pollinated uh, or heirloom and hybrid. So open pollinated plants are those that, or high, you know, heirloom and open pollinated you could use interchangeably. They're basically plants that if you save the seeds from them, the genetic composition of them is stable enough that you should have the same type of plant the next time, or very, very close if not. And that's because they've basically been passed down generation to generation and generation. With hybrid plants, as the name sounds, these are basically plants that are the combination of two or more types of plants that have been cross-pollinated to have certain characteristics. For example, sometimes um, like seedless fruit, right, might be cross-pollinated to have be seedless instead of having seeds in them or things like that. And for flowers, it doesn't matter a huge amount unless you're really wanting a particular type of flower. Um, for vegetables and herbs and, um, well, definitely for vegetables, <laughs> uh, it, it matters a lot more because you're going to be eating them and um, you might risk growing something if you use a um, hybrid plant. You might risk growing something that just won't taste very good. If you're saving seeds from a hybrid flower, um, chances are you will not end up with the exact same looking flower the next time. It might be shorter or taller. The color may be different. Another thing to think about is a lot of times the seeds will actually save, unfortunately, will keep the, the diseases that they had from the plant. And so you don't want to like powdery mildew stays in <laughs> the seed. So you don't want to save 
uh, seeds from any plant that isn't healthy. So you want to save the best of the best. The healthiest looking plants, nothing with diseases. For example, I'm not saving. I may save some seeds from my green zebra tomatoes because they've been fine this year. But I'm not going to be saving seeds from any of my other tomatoes because they've all had issues this year. The other thing to think about is it's a little different for vegetables because some of them you need them overripe beyond the point at which you would eat them. Some you harvest right when they're ripe. Um, so it's a little more tricky, but with flowers, at least the basic ones, most of the time, if you can let them dry outside, that is the best way. If you can let the, the, the flower heads dry up on the stem. But if you're in an area that, like a lot of areas that have had a lot of rain this year, you can harvest them when they start to turn, when they start to look a little bit drying up. You can bring them inside and put them on a paper plate and let them finish drying. And that's what I've done with several of my, uh, of my flowers as well. All right, let's go outside and get this process started. Here we have my zinnias. And you can see here that the heads are starting to dry up on a good number of them. Ideally, this is, you know, if you're having a rainy season and you don't want to save them forever, you could harvest them at this stage, right? right? If, you, if you had no choice and you had a bad season. But ideally, you're gonna wanna, wanna get them at this stage where they've mostly dried up. There's still some, likely some seeds in here that are fully mature. Here's another one. Now that's, you see that's like perfect right there. Kind of see the back of it too. So I'm gonna harvest a few more, then let's go inside and uh, gather, uh, get the seeds out of them. Now all of the flowers that I had marked with a string are already inside drying because I, har I saved them, I marked them earlier on in the year. All right, so there we go. We have quite a few, let's take these inside now. Things you'll want on hand to save the seeds include some kind of, contain some kind of thing to distribute the seeds on. You probably ought to have ideally uh, a plate that's big enough to be able to divide them on it. If you're dealing with a lot of flowers and you're going to have a lot of petals and things you're not going to save, then you know having two paper plates can be easier. Um, you will want to ensure that they are fully dried. Here I have a plate of zinnias that I've been drying. You can see here there's a string on this one because this is one of the ones I marked I wanted to save and as well as this one and they're still in the drying process. This one's probably pretty close to ready uh, to save the seeds from. You'll want some kind of envelope and permanent marker or pen. Now you can put these in a paper bag, you can put them in a glass jar, maybe with um, uh, a moisture absorber to help keep it dry, um, but you'll need something to put them in once they're fully dried as well and to store them and to label them. You can also use like a label maker, right? Like I will use on my jars, but I tend to hand write on my um, ones unless I'm giving them away, then I use the fancy label maker. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start off with just the basics of the zinnia flower, which is that uh, to get the seeds off of it, you can just treat it like a bird and pluck it, right? From the side, just pull it out like that right? You can also kind of mush it down and try to break it up a little bit. Sometimes if it's super dry, the seeds will come right out. Based on my limited experience, I have found that at least for zinnias, the most mature seeds tend to be on the outside and the closer you get to the center, the less mature they are. Uh, if you have saved seeds yourself, let me know if that has been your experience as well. So the next thing you want to do is you want to look through the the, the flowers. I'm going to get closer up on this in a second. You want to pick the healthiest looking, the most um, thick and best structured seeds. And I find that in, in zinnias, not every single seed is necessarily going to be viable looking. The shape of zinnia seed that you're looking for is you want something that looks kind of like a spade slash arrowhead, right? You got this sort of arrowhead kind of look. It's got the ridge in the back and the front. Um, ideally, it still has a little bit of the beyond the seed itself attached, um, but it's okay if it breaks off like, um, let's find one that broke off on its own. You can see the little 
end piece there, kind of. And you want to get something that, uh, let's pick another seat here. That one was a good example, but I'll pick another one. You want to get something that you can really tell that it has that ridge, it has some it has some thickness to it. See how that isn't really um, flat? When I put my hand on it, I can feel the ridge and it's stiff, nice and firm in your hand. Let me find one that doesn't look quite right. Here we go. Here's an example of one that doesn't look quite right. Um, it is pale. You can see the ridges, but when you put your hand on it, it bends. <laughs> like, look at that. How it bends and creases. It's not thick. It doesn't really have any substance to it. And likelihood is, the likelihood is this seed is probably not fully developed and mature enough to, to grow a seed from, to grow a plant from. If you're saving seeds from a flower and you're just not sure if it's, um, you know, the what you're looking for or you're, that you're saving the same seed, you can take, if you have any leftover seeds from the packet that you grew them in or a packet that, you know, has similar type of look. Now I keep mine in an envelope in here so they don't go everywhere. But you can take out the seeds that came from the manu from from the seed sellers and you can look at them up close yourself to make sure you're saving the right part of the plant right you don't want to be saving the wrong thing and look here this is a here's a great example right here it's a great example right there see it has the ridge and in this case it doesn't look like much was saved beyond just the tail end of the seed so even then you're probably fine if it breaks off entirely I actually like to sit at the couch when I'm watching TV or my YouTube videos of friends and, um, you know, go through uh, the seeds just kind of uh, off to the side. You can see I've done a good amount of that here. Got some Xenia seeds already saved up. What I usually do first is clear a spot on the plate that I'm doing where I'm going to save the seeds. I usually save it all the way over in the corner here just to kind of not get them confused. You don't want to have a fan blowing to the, during this part. And you just go through and you find the healthiest looking ones. All right, here we have it. I counted it and it's about 28 seeds from just this one zinnia, which obviously you're not gonna grow, I'm not gonna grow 28 flowers, uh, 28 plants in my garden next year. But I am gonna combine them with the other seeds that I've saved and we're gonna let them all dry out. Um, you know, if you just brought them inside, give them a week or two just to make sure. Uh, if you're in a really high humidity area, maybe a little bit longer and just give them some time to fully dry out to um, ensure they have no moisture in them. You know, using a paper um, bag or a paper container to hold them or something with a moisture absorber can help. The other thing to not forget to do is especially when you first start saving seeds is to label your plate or whatever it is to write on the plate, which you probably want to do before you start doing the seeds, which is Right, so there's no confusion. Once your seeds are fully dried and uh, ready to go, then you'll want to use some kind of envelope like this, obviously. You'll want to put what it is, the year that you harvested them or saved them, and then a description of where it came from. You can say your garden, maybe you, you, know, maybe you got it from a farmer's market, uh, some flowers from the farmer's market, or fruit or vegetable whatever it is but make sure to put that basic information down you can put more down if you think you need it like if it's a special colors or variety of that particular type of plant 
Um, but in this case, I just say zenith. And all you gotta do is just put them right in the envelope. You just put them in. And then you probably do want to, you know, seal it up somehow so it doesn't come out. Uh, in my case, I tend to just leave them, leave it open and on the plate until I know I'm done harvesting all the seeds I need for the season. So I'll usually just like leave them like that uh, and add seeds to it as I go. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And uh, I hope you begin saving seeds for yourself. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.